Hi, my name is Jamie Riddell. I'm a neonatal nurse practitioner with Seattle Children's Hospital, and I've been working here at Providence since 1996. I started as a LPN and just worked my way up through the ranks. So I've done everything from LPN to RN to nurse practitioner. I understand that education really helps us do a better job, and so we really want to talk today about the late preterm policy. The risk of hypoglycemia in the late preterm infant is three times greater than that in the term baby. This is for multiple reasons, uh, the first being that their metabolic state is heightened uh, because of their prematurity. Also, that their adipose tissue layer is not as thick as a term baby simply because they are preterm and don't have that last couple of weeks of gestation to put on some fat. Uh, if a baby is not able to take adequate oral intake, either by breast or by bottle or whatever it might be supplementing, so the baby's not doesn't have as much brown fat as they would normally have uh, given that they are preterm. Once they start to break down their brown fat in order to utilize glucose, uh, they quickly use up what, what is available. The other thing that is very important to know is that once the baby is born, uh, the glucose that is originally supplied from the mother is no longer available, and the preterm baby has a more difficult time adjusting to that cutoff of glucose. Uh, so as we talked about with hypothermia, hypoglycemia and, and hypothermia are very closely related because of that brown fat issue and a baby who's cold is going to become hypoglycemic. A baby who's hypoglycemic will most likely become cold. So those two things are really important to keep linked in your mind. If you do have a baby who's cold, make sure you get a glucose and vice versa. Any instability, including tachypnea, uh, hypothermia, a difficult delivery, uh, fetal distress prior to delivery, an APCAR less than seven, um, maternal magnesium, um, obesity, gestational diabetes, maternal hypertension, all of those things add on to the possible risk for hypoglycemia in the late preterm infant, and they are heightened because the late baby is preterm. There are some things we can do to help prevent the baby from becoming hypoglycemic, and we will talk about those a little bit with the feedings, but in general, we want to try and stabilize the baby as much as possible and maintain a neutral environment to help, help them stabilize. Since late preterm babies oftentimes have trouble breastfeeding and even bottle feeding, it's really important to be uh, very mindful of their glucoses early on. So get those babies into skin to skin right away, breastfeed within the first hour, and make sure that you're teaching the mom along the way, educating as much as you can on uh, assessing the suck, swallow, breathe, and the ability to transfer milk. As we all know, uh, preterm babies don't have the uh, energy oftentimes or the stamina to maintain adequate feedings. So getting them onto the breast as soon as they're showing any cueing signs that they're ready to eat is really important. Vigilant monitoring for hypoglycemia is very important. Being aware of the risk factors prior to delivery will help you be prepared for uh, and, and educate the family for what might come after. Making sure that you are aware of the risk factors and uh, discussing those with the family can be very helpful to help, help them understand why the baby might need supplementation uh, and why you're concerned. Getting the baby in skin to skin and breastfeeding soon after delivery within the first hour is very important. Um, we talked about watching for their cues and just making sure that they are, um, you're, you're picking up on their cues that might be more subtle than a term baby would be. The first couple minutes that they cue might be the only time that they have to actually go to breast. Uh, because of their stamina is short, uh, they may only have three to five minutes to breastfeed for the first time. The other thing to be aware of is that it's really important to keep that baby in skin to skin when, when available, when possible. Um, having at least 10 to 12 breastfeedings per day, that sounds like a lot, but breastfeeding even in clusters or every couple of hours is really important. These uh, are not babies who can go six hours or five hours without feeding. You want to make sure that they're fed at least every three hours and most often we'll have to wake them up to feed um, and to look for those cues because they're going to be more sleepy than your term baby and um, just having more trouble stabilizing and becoming um, comfortable as newborns. Early education in the family can really help you when it comes time to actually intervene for the baby if the blood sugars are low. Uh, please monitor the glucoses as policy states and intervene as necessary. Another thing that's really helpful is lactation support. And uh, we have a lot of great RNs who have, have very lots of experience with lactation support, but please get lactation consults when necessary. 
these late preterm babies have a lot of little nuances that will help them improve their oral feeding skills and uh, the lactation support person can really help you to teach the family and teach the family how to uh, pick up on the cues that may be more subtle than what you're used to. And then very importantly is to educate the family about signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia and when to alert the RN that they're concerned. Um, if those things are including jitteriness, um, extreme lethargy, unable to wake the baby for feedings, um, or being really cold, um, or if they're noticing that the baby seems to have some dusky spells. All those things are really important to educate the family about so they know what to watch for and know when to call you.